A lot of you guys that follow the Management Advantage over the years have seen where our family has taken a small little farm that was mainly cattle and row crop and turned it into a row crop slash wildlife paradise. We started out with just food plots, just as simple as planting a fall food plot. We've been, from there we expanded the food plots, made more food plots. Uh, we installed a bunch of native warm season grasses, particularly switchgrass. That was our main missing component was, you know, good quality cover to keep those deer there. We're bedding the deer closer to the food plots. We're hunting the farm smarter. We're picking from the edges. We're using the wind to our advantage. We're hardly ever going into the interior of the farm. The whole plan is to basically increase the carrying capacity of the farm where before we started our habitat work there may have been two or three spots for these deer to bed and it would hold you know three to five deer now we've got multiple places that these deer can bed multiple choices of food for them to eat so overall our carrying capacity has gone through the roof and we're pulling deer from the neighbors and that's the beautiful thing about doing all this work is watching it work and knowing for a fact that what we did took this farm to another level. Oscar was a deer that, you know, showed up 2010. Dad found um, his two-year-old shed and right, in, right on the edge of one of our food plots. And it's just kind of an odd, you know, antler to, to find. He, he was just, it looked like a two-year-old, you know, pedicle, but he didn't have anything up top. He had a little brow tine, a little squiggly, main beam and just kind of an odd looking deer and so we, we named him Oscar because he's just kind of trashy and um, we didn't know what to think of him you know he, he turns into a three-year-old uh, he's all over in front of the trail cameras but we weren't hunting the farms you know 2011 12 and 13 we really didn't hunt that farm just because we had EHD that hit us we didn't have hardly any mature bucks so we we're just kind of letting it rest while you know we ran trail cameras so we got to watch him grow up throughout the you know all through the farm 2011 when he's three he's all over in front of the trail cameras 2012 got a couple pictures of him not a lot I mean, that was the year he was four uh, 2013 he turns into a five-year-old I got a couple velvet pictures of him but like I said we weren't really focusing on that farm and I wasn't saving a lot of pictures of you know certain especially Oscar just because he wasn't anything special to us at the time we really started to take notice in 2014 he shows up and we've got a bunch of scrape video of him and at this time he's a six-year-old and you know he's still just this funky deer and he's, he's, he's evidently damaged his pedicle because now he's just a spike on that one side and the first visual sighting that I had of, of Oscar was October 30th 2014 he comes out in the food plot like two minutes after I killed the deer we called grandpa and keep this in the back of your mind when I first saw him I was on the phone with my brother and I was videoing him and you can kind of hear me talking to him in the background but anyway I could have killed him then he's just a giant body deer he turns around he, I, he saw or heard me talking on the phone it wasn't something he didn't really like something turns around and he runs off but Ironically, I had just tagged out for the whole year, and there he was. And that kind of became the first move in the chess match that Oscar created with us. And last year, 2015, when he was seven and a half, he really came into his own on this farm. He, he basically owned it. He was all over the place, every trail camera, every scrape that we had. And I left all my trail cameras up through the month of March, and it was kind of cool getting to see you know just how big of a body he had when it was prime time you know right during the peak of the rut he was he had he looked like he had to avoid 300 pounds he dwarfed every other deer on the farm but then you watch the progression of post rut and how these deer um, basically transform you know he went from being this giant body huge neck down to mid-February I get a picture of him coming through a fence gap and he looks like a doe almost he just he had lost every bit of his testosterone and I'm sure that was right before he dropped his antlers 
Um, that's another thing. We never found any of his antlers other than that first one when he was a two year old. He was just, it was so hard to find him. He was, you know, it was basically like finding a spike or a, or a tine because they would lay so flat on the ground. So fast forward to 2016, he shows back up. He's eight and a half. And I don't have a lot of pictures of him this year. I had a couple, I think the first one was August 22nd. He just walked by the camera real quick. And then September 30th. The one thing that really amazes me about the whitetail deer is how each deer is different and how each deer can throw a pattern at you. A lot of times, you know, you're finding a pattern on a deer that may be coming to a food plot and you, you're getting pictures of him and you go in there and you kill him within a week or two week period. This particular pattern on Oscar was a multi-year deal. September 30th, 2015, he walks by our main camera that's on our big food plot, overlooks the whole thing and looks right at the camera like, I know you're watching me. Fast forward to September 30th, 2016, he walks by the same way, looks right at the camera, and they're, they're within a couple hours of each other. Fast forward to November 9th, I was hunting on that big food plot in the redneck hay bale blind. He comes out right, I mean, just barely could get some, some video of him. Well, the previous year, 2015, I was filming my brother. He comes out, does the same thing, but it was a little bit later. I couldn't get any, any footage of it. November 12th, I call my brother and I say, we've got to get in and try to hunt Oscar because right where this stand was, where, where we wanted to go hunt, had a trail camera right there within 40 yards of the stand. And November 12th, 2015, he walked by it four times in the middle of the day. So. I'm thinking maybe by a stroke of luck or this deer just like he had a stopwatch on his arm and said, oh, time to go over there, time to go over here. So I called my brother and said, we've got to be in that stand November 12th on my birthday.
shooting. I'll stop him. Rap. Dallas. Chase that deer. Oh my gosh, we just forever. <laughs> I'm gonna jump out of a damn tree. <laughs> Dude, there's another buck. I cannot express the amount of effort, emotion, um, story, history, anything and everything, every cliche, every, that is, <laughs> I don't know what to say right now. I can't hold still. Dude, what? <laughs> I couldn't be any happier if I'd have shot him myself. That is a giant. Like, his antlers are nothing, but that is a deer that we call Oscar. We've known that deer since he was two. We've picked up shed antlers. We've got pictures of that deer for the last six years since we've known him. And he has been the bully of this farm. He's lived here. <laughs> There's so much. Yeah. There is so much that goes to this. He has eluded us every single time. He is the slipperiest deer that we have ever tried to kill. And we had him in the right spot. And I told you, Dallas, when we sat down in this tree stand tonight, I said, if we can see Oscar and I can snort where he's at him, he's gonna turn inside out. Yeah. Because he's an eight-year-old and he's just a giant bully deer. And he turned inside out and he shot him like <laughs> That's maybe ten yards. That's maybe ten yards. <laughs> and it's on my birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> if we finally put all the pieces of this puzzle together and and made it happen. And to be able to do it with my brother in the tree on my birthday, up an oak tree that is just magical on grandpa's farm 
it, it doesn't get any better than that. And it's so hard to put this in to video format for you guys to watch. And, and I know you guys think I'm crazy for obsessing about a genetically inferior deer, but there will never be another deer that's as cool as Oscar in my mind. It's nice to finally meet you, Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> I have. Up close. We have played some games with this deer, let me tell you. I guess the most special thing about Oscar was that was the last deer that my grandpa knew. Um, the year that he passed away, he got to see Oscar. In 2010, Dad finds this antler, and we were like, that's the weirdest looking two-year-old shed we've ever seen. So he took that piece of leather and made a turkey toter out of it. Just kill a turkey, wrap that around the legs, throw it over your shoulder and go. And I know I've got footage somewhere of us using this, but I can't find it. But that's, uh, there's his finished product right there. And that's just kind of neat, but quite a story. Yeah, I mean, I hate to say it's like our lifetime deer, or, you know, because he's, you know, is what he is. He's not a 200-inch deer, but... There's three generations of history. It's, it's, right. it's so deep that you can't even explain it.